Hi everyone. What we're going to do today in this tutorial is have a little look at invention drawing using Photoshop. Your last task was to do a metamorphosis drawing, taking two different objects and transforming them from one into the other. Here in front of you, I've got quite a nice example by Eddie Kisasondi. Um, it's an example I've taken off the internet. Um, but it really shows a beautiful transformation from this hot air balloon to this octopus-like form. And he's progressed the ideas quite seamlessly and in quite a linear fashion. Being able to transform two ideas is and converging them into one or several intermediary designs is an essential tool for any designer in any discipline. And hopefully through this tutorial today, you'll see the benefits of it. What you need to think about in this exercise that we've just done is that your, start, your two objects, it doesn't really matter what they are. This top object could refer to the work of another designer and your bottom object could be one of your ideas, one of your concepts. The drawings in the middle, therefore, are your experimentation, taking influence from the designer, combining your own ideas and hopefully finding something harmonious in between. The two separate drawings might equally be two different ideas or two design proposals that you might have. Often when we come up with ideas and come up with multiple ideas and present them to our clients or teachers or whoever it might be, there'll be elements of each design that we prefer and having the ability to take influence from the two ideas and merge them together is a really essential skill. We don't always lay it out in such a linear fashion, but in the ways in which we're thinking, actually taking influence from different things, this linear pattern shows that, that progression from one idea to another and what the intermediary objects might look like. What I'd like you to do today is an invention test, and I want you to choose a discipline, or it can be multiple disciplines, and take one of your drawings, one of your intermediary drawings, not your starting one or your, your, the two end ones, one of your intermediary drawings, your favourite one, and I want you to use it, and I want you to be as inventive as possible in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do and to demonstrate is I'm going to create a series of fashion drawings to begin with. Then I'll show you a few examples of other things I might do with just the same drawing. First thing you want to do is just go to your direct, uh, your polygonal lasso tool and draw around your object just to cut it out and cut it off the page. I think I've got that selected before, just going all the way around. When you get back to the beginning, just click and you should get this selection zone. And I'm just going to copy it, Command C or edit copy. And then over here in this tab, I've got this figure um, silhouette drawing, which I've, again, I've just taken from the internet. If you're looking to do a fashion project and you're looking to create a series of designs which you might apply to a figure, you may choose to do the same, but preferably you will do a drawing of your own or several drawings of your own. I think it's really important when you're applying uh, designs to figures that you have a range of figures. So try and find a collection of three or four different figures that you can apply your ideas to. So what I'm going to do now is paste my drawing across. Well, it's not my drawing, but the drawing across. First thing you'll notice is this paper colour here is a lot greyer than the paper I'm working on here. So if you just go at the top to Image, Adjustments and Levels, alternatively just Command L on your keyboard. If I just pull the white up slightly, you can see that now that tonally those two are matching up and I haven't lost too much detail in the drawing. So just click OK. Next thing you'll notice you've got this as a separate layer now. So we've got a background layer which our drawing and our object on top. What I'd like you to do is just set that to multiply like so. Instantly, just applying it on top, you can see a range of different ideas that you might have for it immediately. Could this act like a skirt? Could I place it like this? Could it work if I brought it the other way around as a, as a top? Maybe I'm going to scale it down. And how could it work potentially as a head garment? One thing that's useful to do here is if you are needing a bit more space to work around your drawing, you might just want to increase the canvas size. And to do that, if you just go to image at the top, 
to just cut out and canvas size, you can make these adjustments. So to the height of this one, I might just go 45 centimetres in centimetres. And if I press the bottom arrow down here, can you see all these arrows go upwards? It will now extend my canvas um, at the top. If I click at the top, it will extend it downwards. But I want a bit of space so I could put a hat in. I can always crop this down again later. And you can say, see easily how I could maybe just make this into a sort of fascinator, for example, like so. What you might then choose to do is go to your background layer, go to your eraser on the left hand side and just take out some of the details that you don't need. So I don't want to be able to see the head through. And now immediately I've taken my design and just been really playful with it and turned it into something it was never intended to be. And that's what your challenge is today. How many different things can you come up with using this one same object? I might take this again now and I might try and create something else to give you an example. So I might take this one and I might try and make a pair of trousers out of it. We can of course stretch our, our and enlarge our drawings. If we press shift, we can pull them um, and twist them. I'm gonna try and keep this proportional. It'll keep it in better quality. It's not brilliant quality as it is. And I might just try scaling these up now. I'm just gonna rotate that one slightly as we get to the bend in the knee. And I'm gonna try and make a bonkers pair of trousers from from these drawings. So again, I'm just pressing the option key, clicking and dragging. Do another one there. And then I wanna do the same on the other side. Now, this isn't obviously going perfectly. It's overlapping lots of the lines, but I'm perfectly happy with that. This is really just about invention and communication of ideas and things. You know, we can see these are overlapping, but it doesn't matter. When we zoom out in a second, you will hopefully see that it will give us the desired effect that we want. Lastly, I might take one of these and just enlarge it. If I press the shift key, I can just drag it out a little bit wider. It obviously looks very pixelated at the moment, but when I hit the enter key, it will render out slightly. It's not the best quality drawing. I might just bring that in slightly there. Pull it out a little bit wider. Maybe place it something like that. So now we've got these kind of bonkers, bubble, puffer, style uh, trousers. If you want, what I'd do now is maybe just go back to your background layer again, go to your eraser tool. If you right click or go to the top of your screen up here, you can adjust the size. Um, so I'm just gonna get you know, a good size brush and I might just take out some of those details in the legs that we don't need there that interfere with the line slightly. Excellent. And now I might leave that drawing as it is and bring it across. Might just crop my page down slightly. And what's the easiest thing to do just to bring this design across is if I just um, right click in on any of my layers, right click and just go to flatten image, it will compress all of those layers together. So if I just select the whole thing, command A or draw a selection box just over a specific area, I can copy this design across. So copy, command C. What I often do is just undo that now. So I've got all my layers back. So if I just press, you see I've got all my layers back there now. And then over on this page is a page of other designs I've created earlier in sort of true Blue Peter style. So I'm now going to paste that design in. Oh, hang on a second. I've uncopied that somehow, flatten image. I'm going to paste it across into this larger drawing. And again, what I'd recommend you do is hit the multiply in your layer function there, just so you can then overlap drawings if you need to but it also means that your white box doesn't go over the top of other drawings. 
So on this page, you can see I've had a range of different designs. Look at this now. I don't, I don't quite like how those legs are placed because it looks like they're part of the body. So I'm going to just continue just adjusting and making tweaks to the arrangement like so. If your task today is something like this, how many different ideas and concepts can you come up with using this one designed element? Now, these might be pieces of jewellery that you're looking to string together. They might be fashion garments. They might be buildings or architecture. They may be pieces of furniture. And by all means, you can add other elements in, but I really want the kind of essence to be this one object. And, you know, by adjusting scale, by building things up, by overlapping, how far can you take that idea and design? Take it well away from the kind of cheese grater and the screwdriver that you metamorphosize together and that object in the middle. Can this become something sculptural? Could it be a big public sculpture and you superimpose it into environments? Could it become a piece of body adornment? Could you put lots of them together and it makes a facade for a building? How inventive can you be using this single component and how many different ideas can you come up with? Here I've got, you know, maybe about 10 different ideas from kind of scarves to these little boot cuffs to these whole sort of garments to hats to trousers you know try and be as creative as possible and try and use if you are doing fashion a range of different figures you can always use the same figure twice you can see that this figure here that I'm using is the same as this figure here what I might do is just press shift and just flip her over so it now feels slightly different let's bring it out slightly and think about hierarchy on your page as well lastly what you might do is go back to some of the skills that we've looked at earlier adding little washes of color and so forth what i'm going to do now is just go to image and duplicate so what this will do is give me a whole second page, which is just a direct copy of this one here. I've got a copy over here. And on this one, I'm just gonna right click, flatten image. So I've got everything on one layer just to make it really nice and simple. I've kept this one over here. So in case I make any mistakes, in case I change my mind about something, I can always go back. What I'd like you to think about doing now is adding little washes of color. So you will see down here what might have stood out is I've got this sort of octopus and I thought what would make most sense is to take reference from the colours of this octopus to apply to these octopus-like inspired visuals. So what I'm going to do is create a nice little swatch book. So I'm just going to go to my kind of rectangular marquee or rectangular selection tool. I'm just going to draw a square so if I press the shift key it will turn to a square. I'm now going to go to my pipette tool and just try and pick up some of these colors. So I quite like that pink color there. I'll go to my paintbrush and just paint that in. Okay. Now I'm just going to drag that selection area off. I might just pop it up here. And I want to try and get one of the more purpley colors now. So let's try and get one of the darker purple, something like that. Now I'm going to go with purple because partly because Mr. Campbell loathes it. So we'll see if we can make something nice using purple and lastly I want to try and get some of that orangey tone as well so again pipette tool oh, that's quite a nice orange I had a second ago something like that and paint that in beautiful thing about taking colors from nature is colors in nature often go together really well um, they tend to work quite nicely together I don't think this color set is perfect and you know especially the orange it does slightly glare with me the, the pink and that purple go quite nicely actually slight something slightly softer there might work a bit better but I'm just going to scale this up a little bit just so it feels a little bit neater now I've created that, those color swatches there because it just makes them really easy to pick up and use I'm going to create a new layer. So down the bottom right hand corner, create a new layer, layer one. And again, I'm just going to go to my pipette tool and I might start with the, this pink color here. And I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool. Now certainly don't color everything in. You might just color in one or two of the ideas you like. You might also use this opportunity if you're doing architectural buildings to be putting in little figures to give them a sense of scale. 
if you are or giving areas the feeling that they might be windows so if this was an architecture building you know i might think about selecting areas and making them into windows to show that they're an opening adding people or trees for scale and um, because i've got this you know uh, drawing of the figure behind it. I've already got that sense of scale but if you've got making table forms for example you might be just drawing in something to make something feel like a tabletop. So on this layer I'm going to set it to multiply because obviously if I now paint I'm painting over my drawing so I'm going to set it to multiply and I might go in and just start painting an area in like so. Again I might adjust my brush um, just increase its hardness, especially as I go towards the edges, so I don't overlap, uh, go over areas I don't want to. But of course, if I make any mistakes, like I did just there, I can go in with an eraser, and often that's the easiest thing to do, is to draw something roughly, and then pick up your eraser, and again, I probably want a nice hard edge on that, and maybe a slightly smaller diameter, and then I can just go in and neaten up some of those, like so. Smaller still. And you can just give little washes of colour to areas to try and help make them pop a little bit more. And again, I might do the same. I might just paint, paint this part here. Go back to my eraser. And we can clean it up like that. I'm not going to go through and do all of them. We can, of course, use some of the other tools we've looked at before, like using the burn tool to add a bit of shading to the sides. You know, especially something that's kind of pleated like this, you might want to, you know, really pick up the, these dark areas where we've naturally got a bit of shading anyway, so it kind of changes the colour within them. You can give things a little bit of shading, and of course, you can lighten areas using the dodge tool as well, should you wish. All right, so have a little play with that. You don't need to cover color everything. This task really is about invention. How far can you push a single idea, a single drawing that you've come up with? How far can you take it? I really look forward to seeing what you come up with. The best of luck.